light to that there. I don't know if that comes up in much light in that now or not, but, but that's this is the head of the crane. And so you, you can see the detail here of the the feathers that was created by just getting you know the, the big files for the horses and they stamped that into when it was when it was red hot. Then you have the eye here, this was a special tool that was created here in the Again, just with a, a little ball bearing was stamped into it and chiselled all around to give the detail. That was used again and again, either for gate detail or the likes of this crane eye here. You can just see, you can just see that it was the, the exact yeah, print of it, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. And the beak then was just chiselled out into into a kind of a point and chiselled up along here in the middle just yeah. to look for the, for the beak. But just back along here then you can see a bit more detail, you can see the, the shamrock stamp. That's there. the same. It is the same as above in the gate, the gate. Yeah. and there's another stamp here which I cannot find that tool, but it's something similar to this one except it's kind of like the inverse of it. You have a centre part and the dent and the dent. And every along. blacksmith would have had their own They would. Emblem. Well, they all had their own name stamped for sure to patent their own work, if you know what I mean. And they, they would have had all their own little stamps as well. So I'll just show you the other, the other stamps. This is the, the shamrock that you'd be used to seeing. And the one all, that's all on my mother's yeah. feet. But there was actually more detail in that. Inside in each leaf, the, there's the little veins of each of the leaves. You, you can see that really clearly on the gate over going into Innes. You must stop it and have a look I at that the next time. I will take a look at tomorrow actually and take a good look at it. Yeah, have a, take a few pictures. But what you'll see in that if you look really closely is you'll see the actual veins inside and each of the leaves. However that was done, I don't know, but that was done. But this is, we'll say, the Sullivan's name, for instance. This is, that's the main... Um, the main tool that was used to put the name on all, any of the work they did. And you have a perfect example right beside you here for the, the Schlen. Isn't that incredible that that was in it is, isn't it? my and father's it, it house? so well because normally the rust would build up and yeah. you'd have to sandblast it or something. It's incredible. But I think this little fella is a work of art. This is, this is the slam for cutting turf. And it was, it was a, a long handle like this. And then you had a timber wedge that goes down the side. It's called a trestle, I think. What happens is the square handle goes down here and then this little timber trestle here which was made by a joiner was put down here and hammered and the wedge then will square up against the, the handle that goes down along puts extra pressure on it like you know and that acts as the step as well then when you're yeah. when you're cutting down into the bog that you can apply pressure yeah, on that yeah, there yeah 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 you know wasn't there a great sense of pride in their work though or a sense of mortality whatever they signed everything yeah. and knew that one day that's right someone will be asking questions or something to be done five generations later perhaps that's right. i wonder which yeah. generation had the actual sullivan stamp like did that start with your father or your grandfather or definitely his father that would be my grandfather Thomas Sullivan, would have had that stamp because the man before him was james okay his stamp is up there as well j that sullivan oh. so they, they must that must have actually come from my father's father my grandfather. So this is actually my great grandfather's um, centre punch. Just a, a really simple little idea again. It was just used for marking steel. Where, for example, when you want to just put a, a hole in something, you would just you just hammer that in. You just put that onto the red hot metal. Yeah. Just hammer that in. And that would give you the mark of where you need to drill through or whatever you know. So it was. It's gas to think the little things like that are still around. Yeah. These are the. The brands, the brands then as well for this is just for cutting the holes you know in the horseshoe where the nails have to go through yeah. there's a there's a whole punch a whole range of them this is another just a big center punch just slightly bigger than this fella here for putting a deeper hole and i suppose they have made the tools themselves they would. as well that, that's the thing they actually made all those yeah so you're actually handling the tools that that's, your grandfather right. great yeah. grandfather yeah but it wasn't just a case of making them they had to make these in such a way that they wouldn't wear and how you do that is when, when you have this shape done, you, you redden that in the fire again and you either cool it in oil, it, it tempers it, it changes the, the property of the metal, you know. So they were up and all that kind of thing as well. Oh my God. You know, so you can see yourself, there's just a whole bunch of stuff there. This fella here was for nails in the horseshoe. You'd start off the, the nail with this, the mark for the nail, and then you, you follow through with a, a finer punch called a, a pitchel. And then this fella here must have been for the rivets. And when he guessed him, because I, I, I can't remember him talking about the rivets, but they used to make their own rivets. So I'm guessing this was used just to, to even off the head of it when it was red hot, you know. Again, that was another shamrock brand. Must have been a really old one, I'd say, because it's, 
it's well worn but you, yeah. can, you can still get the idea when you punch that onto the onto timber you'll see it you know and this, and this felt you can just about make that out as well it's um i think js either james sullivan or ts for tom sullivan one of the two. Oh yes on the head of it just about see it yeah 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 well you can you can see it quite clearly yeah mm -hmm. So if it was James Sullivan's, we're talking back in... You were talking back before my grandfather, yeah, that's, that's the great-grandfather's time, yeah. So you're talking probably before the famine? You would be around that time, yeah. So they were God, probably paid with food. incredible that they're still... <laughs> yeah, and he would have worked for the, for the yeah, local yeah, landlord. He, he immigrated to America, James Sullivan. He immigrated to America and he, he worked as a blacksmith on the railways in America. And this is the tool he brought home with him. It was, I think it's called a calipers. There's various different settings you can have on that. It's like an outside adjustment. You can measure the outside of a pipe at each end down along. It must have been used in the railway. And as I speak of it, the name is branded there. He put in his own brand, oh, J. Sullivan. You can but see it, you can. Can you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it, is it that way around? Is the, you can is just see, when you, when you get in the right light, you can mm -hmm. see. God, there really was a sense of... Like, that was his own tool, so it was a sense of, I don't know, you know, signing everything, wasn't there? It was, oh, yeah, real. yeah. It you see, a... there was a lot of blacksmiths around. There was a good few of them even in this area. There was one above in Francis yeah. Max Cross, like, you know, there was one up near E, Quinlevin's Forge, like, so there was, <coughs> as you say, there was great pride there. Yet it was down here they came to get the slain. Yeah, isn't that good? <laughs> it must have been war on, was there? <laughs> isn't it funny to think that both of our ancestors, yeah. there was a common 70, the 80, of 90 years ago, were here. That's making right. that slain and order to collect right. it, paying right. for it, yep. talking about it. And apparently there was big work. I never saw it being made, but there was big work in making these slands. Because you know, of the curve, I suppose, on the Because of the curve, well. you had to have a man sledging here at all times, which, you know, you had to, you'd be adjusting it on the, the end of the whole time, there'd be a man sledging it, and there'd be, I'm sure, a few roars to go handy, go easy, <laughs> go handy, yeah. whatever it was, you know. Well, it's incredible That's that that was the one thing you said to me, that you were looking for a slain, yeah, and this... It was right. the first oh, thing that I found in a, really in a box. This, it's like a work of art to find it, you know. Yeah. Um, they used to make their own nails here. I was actually practicing one there lately. Um, just out of square bar, they used to just taper it out to a fine point. And what they do then is they just they'd pop this into, um, into a little spacer in the anvil. I haven't the right one there yet now, but you basically taper out the steel into a fine point. And then you'd have a tool like that, which is just you known as a nail header tool. And this would fit down over it and it would get caught around this point here and you would just flatten that out so you, you get the head of the nail that way, you know. Now, I don't, I think that would probably be back in the great-grandfather's time, you know. They, they, they always had their nails here, but they might, they might have needed their own special ones at some stage. I think that's the tool for here, I'm not sure. Let's see. Let's one down. It's, it's, it would look something very like that now. It was known as a nail header. And once you've your, your big nail tapered out to a point like this, it just fits down and it gets cut here, the wedges. And from there then you're able to create the head because you just hammer that flat mm. on it, you know, and that's how you're doing. But again, I'm not sure. It's one of those mysteries that I don't think anyone is going to answer. But it would be something very similar to that now. Mm. No. Whether that's it or not, I don't know. Um, these were all... Little fellas here that were used for um, the soy. You see one up there across the way for cutting the cutting the meadows before the machinery came along. There's actually two of them here. There's there's a there's a pipe, a steel pipe version, and there's the timber version. Oh we have that at home as well. The steel one, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you see this had a hand this this is one that came later, but before they had to create their own ones with just a certain certain shape of a branch. And the blacksmith would have made the what the blacksmith made here was, he made these little parts here for the handle. Oh yes! Right, um, there's a bloody name for it now, it's gone out of my head, but I'll think of it again. Um, just with a plain piece of steel again, maybe a half inch by yes, quarter yes, inch. Yes. And I actually have a video of him doing that, it's one of the only videos oh. I do. So that's nice to have. That is and fabulous to have. It is, it is nice, yeah. Um, so this was just a normal piece of timber then that was just hammered through. But that, that tends to slide up and down along, so what they did was they just simply drove a horse nail in here, just to wedge okay, it. Okay, okay. That's all that was. But then the, the top part itself, there was a little part needed for that as well, a round ring 
Oh yes, at the very top. It. Uh, yeah, and that 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 <coughs> kept in place with a, a wedge as well. Um, there's another couple of things. This was known as um, a coulter for a plow. You can see that little design again as well. They just they tended oh, to put yes. that in everything. You know, this was just done with a chisel in, but that was the. That was, the that was idea Sullivan's. That they, yeah, it was their little tool. Mark. Whether they, they made it or bought it, I don't yeah. know where they got it. But, but what this was for was at, at the very top of a plow. This used to sit in, um, in a really kind of a firm latch, and he used to he used to tear along the ground in front of the plow, and dig up the worst of you know the heaviest of the scraws before the plow itself came along. So I was delighted I found out what that was because it was hanging around and I hadn't a clue what it was. Yeah, yeah. And it was for something special. But and you were oiled up and cleaned up all cleaned of this. Yeah, yeah, cleaned up. Now there's, there's a lot still to be done. But, but did I ring a bell with you? I think it's St. Patrick up the mountain now. <laughs> sheep's crook for catching the leg of a sheep, you know, when oh he wants to dip God. them. Oh my God. That was the pattern anyway. I haven't anyway. seen one of those before now. Yeah. That it would be made with much thicker steel than this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what they would do then is they'd flatten out that steel into a very wide area down here and curve it around in a circle for the handle. You know, that would just fit up. And when you it. say that's the pattern, that's what the blacksmith would have sort of based it on the he, size he have, and the... Exactly, yeah. So that's what... It, I don't think he made many of them, to be honest, but it was, it was just something he kept in the forge, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, that's just your normal briar hook or slash hook. The old style, really. The and the whole head of that would have been made by the blacksmith. There would have been one time, all right, probably, yeah. And the shears, we have... This was the shears, yeah, for cutting the sheep. But the blacksmith wouldn't have made those, would he? No, no, no. just literally just edged them, or maybe if something went and he'd be oh, able yes. to revet them. Yes, or, yes, yes, But yes, they yes, could yes. have, I mean, the older blacksmiths, they really had to make everything, you know. So yeah, I mean, yeah, true. It would have been possible, like. Yeah. But it would have been a lot of work as well. And for the amount of money you probably get for it, was it worth yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Huh. But I'd say that's how it was with every job. It probably would have been, yeah. Because the earlier blacks, they would have been gifted, like, you know, because that's what they would have been doing all the time. I wonder what age your father was when he'd have started here. When he started, he was 14, 15 at the latest. Yeah, he started just brushing floors and keeping the um, the fire going because it was just a, it was a big bellows. They used to keep the fire going before the electric bellows came, you see. It was a big fan bellows. Oh, yes. And there used to be a big wooden pole came across from that and anyone here helping the blacksmith they, they keep pulling down that that pole and just keep the, the fans coming through the air coming through to keep the fire going. And that would have been coal I suppose coal, yeah, yeah. you'd have to think yeah. a special coal called slack. A blacksmith coal they used to call it oh. especially where it would keep the heat down on the fire where they needed. Uh, this is the electric one that came along a bit. Oh, okay. Just simply, I just keep the, the air under the fire the whole time to keep it coming through. And do you like that now, Declan, sometimes, sir? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've been doing a few things, all right, yeah. Um, you see these pokers down here, I've been making these, just the old fashioned oh, yes. kind of pokers for the fire and that, but it's more just practice than anything else, you know. There's something to be doing, just. God, I must look at home again in my mother's house. I, there could be some of those pokers. Really? From the priest time, there could be. Okay. Oh, by all means, we'll have a, have yeah. a chat about them. There could be now. Um, there was a, a latch for a gate that I wanted to make similar to what he made for my own gate. I was just making up a similar copy of it. It was just the latch actually comes along here, then the piece of metal that you, yeah. you pull back, you know, but that's just, just for the head of it. Um, there's a whole range of hooks then that they'd have along, you know. They might have a, a piece going along, we'll say. Um, hangers for different implements that might be hanging up like you know that was a typical kind of a, mm. a pattern they'd have yes, a load of yeah, them hanging yeah. along you know um, there's a couple of things around with that I'm just not too sure I think they must, this must be some kind of a brand maybe for for sheep or something like that mm. you know like could be for Casey or whoever you know yes um, whether that was just yeah. dipped in oil or some kind of a, a paint yeah. But you see, everything, there was no such thing as a welder. You can see that this bar had to be attached to this using a rivet. Yes, yes, yes. You know, yes. I mean, that was all big work. Everything had to be reddened in the fire. Yeah. Looks like there was some other brand and here as well. Scale, like, you can see the, like, even the, the shape of the sea. That's there right. Was a real That's sense right, yeah. of perfection. Wasn't Tapered it? out to an end, yeah. I mean, and just looking really at that there, it looks like there's font. an initial missing here, doesn't it? There it must have been another letter here. It looks like that, yeah. Yeah. You know. yeah. 
That's one of the bigger horses she's been. It would have been off a, a Scottish Clydesdale. You know, the ones you'd see in the Budweiser reds. And you know what I did see in the shed? I didn't bring it down. It was a tiny. I thought it might right. be off a donkey or something. Um, was it as small as the it guys was in front there now? It was longer. Um, about that width, but longer. Longer than that. And kind of... Because these were off the, the men's boots at the time. Oh, yes. You hear them coming down the road, apparently. <laughs> Was so Bexmith would have made those as well. I don't know about those. Maybe. Maybe if they were really stuck, but it was just mainly the horse she was ever made. This is painted silver now, but this is one of the typical ones he would have made. I think it's known as a cock and wedge. You have a it's like a high heel for a woman's shoe mm. for all the world. It's just for grip. This would be down. Yes. And this would be resting against each side of the horseshoe, you know? Yeah. Or the, the horse's hoof. It's just I don't know why the hell he painted a silver, but anyway. But you can see it's it's not symmetrical. Every hoof was slightly different. Yes, yes, and yes. And they had a different. There might be a certain dip in the horseshoe, so they would have to have that at an angle. It was you know there was a real science in horseshoe. Yeah. I thought I thought it was just a case of a, a general Time pattern. But, was, yeah, it's but there was a science in everything, like you know. And I wonder when, um, you know, that it came down through five generations. I wonder, was it just one in the family that really had? Um, took over like really yeah yeah well even your father obviously had a real love for us so. um, my father's father my grandfather thomas his brother what was his name anyway we'll say jack and um, there was two brothers and one of the they used to work side by side for a while in the forge but then one of them just went farm because as you say maybe there might okay. be enough work for to, okay. to the two of them you know so yeah it probably would have been just one really. like it is it is unusual for a tree to come down through five generations it is, it's amazing it is, yeah, really yeah there was and then to the sixth the, Oh, well, yeah, the interest anyway. <laughs> yeah, there was three of them here, and then two of them, they went elsewhere. Dennis, I don't know where he practised. He would have been the great-grandfather of... Yeah. Oh, well, you know. So you have a third cousin someplace, probably, um... Oh, probably, yeah. In a similar... Whatever it is. This is what I was telling you I was about to throw years ago when I had no value in... Oh, this yes! Thing. This was hanging up in the, the cow shed at home. And uh, I thought, let's... Throw that in with the rest of the metal, get that out of there. But that was thrown back very quickly into the shed with a dirty look. <laughs> Made by? <laughs> Made by my grandfather. Your grandfather. grandfather. Yeah. And the real beauty of it is in these hooks again, like, you know, and riveted here on top. And that was for hanging up the meat. It must have been for meat or something or other anyway. It was, it was for quite high. Yeah, yeah. And um, whether it was for meat or what it was, I don't know. But yeah, it was quite pointy, so maybe it was to, to hold the meat or whatever. Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of things there now. These are all the taps then, because you know when you when you got a bolt or um, or these bolts or screws years ago, you had to make some of them themselves, you know. So you you would literally just have a, a solid bar like that. So they they'd forge ahead in it, but then they had to put this thread. So that's what that's what all these tools are for. You can just see, you can just about make out the thread inside oh, here. Yes. So that goes down over that, then you you actually cut the thread. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clockwise like that. It's a whole range of different sizes. These were just Gosh, for... There's a real sense of attention to detail, isn't there? There was, yeah. I mean, even in that, yeah. clockwise, I can imagine. That's right. Oh, yeah, if you got that wrong, it, it, yeah. you, you would risk even breaking the tool, like, you know. Yeah. Yeah, the, the main job done in the forward then was the, the shoeing of the wheel, it was called. Actually, only just brought this over today, so it's a bit of a look. But this is your typical um, horse cart wheel, we'll say, you know. But this, this band of metal was put all around the edge to protect the timber from wearing on the road. Yeah. But I mean, that had to be done at all the forges. That was a big job. That was a full day's work. They might do five or six different um, wheels. And what to actually create this band of metal, you, you had to calculate the circumference of the wheel, first of all. And that's, that's what this was for. It was known as a traveller. And when the, the, blacksmith, well, the, the farmer would bring this wheel to the, the blacksmith, this, the iron band might be gone out of it, you know. So what the first thing we'd have to do is calculate the circumference. So it would be maybe 20 revolutions or whatever it was in this here. So that would tell you the, the length of the steel bar you would need. Because this just came as lengths of steel, you yeah. know. It might be 20 foot long or something like that. So they would cut that length of steel just slightly short of the circumference of the wheel. And the reason for that was when they created the band, in the forge there was a big fire outside the forge and they would put this band into it when it was made and it would expand slightly so that it would just go over the edge of the wheel and then buckets of water were thrown in it so it would actually contract 
and it would go because it was slightly smaller than the wheel circumference, it would tighten everything together. That was the idea of that.